a lot of change of thoughts lately, just maybe in the past month or two, about growing the wild stuff versus growing the domesticated more. And um, it's really tying in with a lot of Daniel Vitalis' stuff lately. I don't know, coincidentally or not, it's just I'm really experiencing it firsthand. And a lot of the purchases I made a year ago in Minnesota are reflecting that. Like I've I've planted a lot of autumn olives and wild sea buckthorn, wild Juneberry. Uh, it's and it's amazing because those things do so. They're they're fine. Like I'm not there at all, really. And when I come back, they're they're living, they're producing, they're fighting off the weeds. But I look in the garden where I'm trying to grow like cabbage and and beets and Swiss chard and and remember I'm not there, you know. So I come back and they're just totally choked out by by weeds, you know, like a lot of grasses and and then you see um, wild lettuce just everywhere, you know, so I'm just I'm just eating wild lettuce because the Swiss chard and the beets can't even compete with it. It's amazing, but the stuff is so bitter that really I probably chop up or nibble on 10, 15, maybe 20 leaves a day and that's it. So uh, like here, like this basil is actually doing really fine. Like um, no problems, no problems. There's a bee right there behind me. Um, it's starting to flower now. Not, not really, it's got a lot of, um, I think it's got some medicine in it that's fighting off, you know, these worms. But the tomatoes, they'll get hit pretty hard by the tomato hornworm and the, and the eggplants really don't stand a chance unless you get them when they're bigger because um, if you put them out in the elements when they're too small, they'll, they're gonna, you'll see, they'll be gone in two days at the most. Either worms will get them, like um, caterpillars and such, or it'll be mice, or then you're looking at rabbits and your bigger stuff like javelinas can just take out anything. Um, like in the front, we'll go up there and there's just so much damage all the time now. So it's either you build a fence uh, to keep the wild animals out or you just grow stuff that they don't like but that you still value. You know what, like the aloe vera is not touched. They don't like that and that aloe vera does so well here and it's so valuable. And same with like prickly pear. You won't see them really attacking prickly pears but if we were to get into the habit of using those more often you know we might think well I don't eat prickly pears and that might be true right now but get into the habit of using that, get into the habit of using aloe vera. That's, uh, that's an amazing addition to a diet. And if you can grow it out in the desert, like it's, it's just not sustainable. It's not sustainable to be doing a veggie patch in, in the desert. It, unless you're collecting your rainwater and saving it in massive, massive uh, containers of water, cisterns. I mean, if you're just using using the municipal supply um, just to keep these veggies alive and they're you know and you got to protect them anyways from from rodents and and check them every day for insects and it's just ridiculous it's ridiculous uh, it's so discouraging sometimes not even discouraging I'm gonna say it's really eye-opening because we're all about adaptation and and going towards closer and closer to the model of nature you know, like right now I'm looking at Mexican oregano down here and no problems. No problems. Espazote, no problems. All the basils. Actually, I take that back. Basil once in a while will get nibbled down hard by something, but uh, these are all really big around me. They made it. You know, the grapes are doing okay. Peppers are a pain in the butt. You got to watch those. Eggplants every couple days you got to go out and check underneath the leaves and, and find the worms. And they're just so prevalent. They're really prevalent. And you know, it's, it is the desert. I guess there's not a lot of succulent things to munch on, so maybe we're more vulnerable compared to Minnesota. I've had damage in Minnesota, lots of deer damage, and you know, luckily it's, it hasn't been to the extent um, of javelinas or anything. But they nibble a lot of trees down really hardcore, and they'll take raspberries down, and, but the raspberries always come back and um, it works. It does. It is working, and everything in the greenhouse is really fine. That's just stellar. I love it in there. That I, I don't really have any pest problems in there. I'll just have to look for the occasional caterpillar or something. But otherwise, it's very nice. We're gonna walk down here. I want to show you what we're looking at. I'm really trying to transition more. We've got a lot of those goji berry seedlings from Jake at Raw Utah. Um, I'm gonna be sending him some white sapote seeds. Uh, in a couple days. 
he can definitely keep those alive in his greenhouse, I believe. If not, he'll bring them in inside in the winter time. But he sent us those goji berries and we're we'll have to start planting more of those. I'm really feeling the aloe vera. I'm feeling the, the prickly pear cactus. Uh, basil's doing really well. If we can get the grapes really established and keep them going, I think they'll really get down in there and they won't need so much watering. Uh, there's a lot of herbs that are doing okay, the Mexican oregano, the espazote I think would be okay, but a lot of it needs water. If it doesn't get the water, right now at least, I mean, we're at end of September and it's still been uh, over 105 easily and dry and I mean, I'm looking up at the sun right now and it's definitely a hot day. Uh, it's not cooling off. I'm, I'm in a backwards kind of environment that most people are used to. Most people are kind of winding down for the season, uh, getting all their harvesting in. But even up there, to really do it sustainably, uh, it's just, it's such a, you guys wouldn't believe how much, how much went into planting everything, both in Arizona and Minnesota. All the fossil fuels needed to bring in compost and it's, it's, it's needed, we, we need to take that advantage now while we have it because it's going to be really hard later. So I beg of anybody out there that's interested in replanting, you know, the Garden of Eden in your backyard, get it now, you know, get it while you can get dump trucks of it. And, and you can drive to Home Depot and buy fruit trees and at a reasonable price. This is a really good time to start implementing some of these practices. It's not like uh, we should wait around and even though it doesn't feel sustainable because we're burning gasoline to drive somewhere and, and to pick up mulch and um, you know using gasoline to mulch all the chips and and you know maybe you know drive around whatever it doesn't you get the point it's not as long-term sustainable as it would seem but you just have to set up those systems and start working with the animals you know chickens bees goats then you can start producing your own but it's uh, it takes it takes some time especially if you don't have a lot of uh, a lot of manpower and you can't drive stuff around I mean now's the time to really get this thing started Whew. gosh <laughs>